So I'm really excited about this lesson. And it just reminded me about some of the things that I hadn't reviewed for a while. And I even learned a couple things in this lesson. So, so we're going to start with the suffix A-R-D. And we're going to go to W's and we're going to talk about vowel R's. All right, so we're going to start with A-R-D. And A-R-D, they form nouns. And they mean persons that are always engaged in an activity. They also mean they are seen as a certain way and a person who usually stays in a particular state. So they can have different meanings, three different meanings. And they come from the German origin, and, which means hard or hardy. So here's a bunch of words that say, that have at the end of the word. Now remember, it's a suffix, so it is erd. A-R-D says erd, even though it looks like ard. But sometimes it says ard in different words. But as a suffix, it typically says erd. So it will be as a suffix at the end of multi-syllable words. Does that make sense, Paul? Okay. So like wizard. So if you think about a wizard, it's somebody that whizzes around. Whiz is your base word on here. Now, not every single word that we have, you might have to go look up the origin to really understand what the base word would be. And sometimes A-R-D would just be part of the word. So coward, see how A-R-D says erd. Haggard. A-R-D says erd. See how hag would be your base word? Gizzard. But see how these ones right here, can you see how um, they're describing something up in here? So um, a person who usually stays in a particular state could probably be a coward or maybe probably a wizard. Um, but gizzard isn't, doesn't really fall in that. So sometimes it's not particularly a person, right? So you will have some words that have this. You would probably have to look that up and really understand where this part of the origin actually comes from. Lizard, see how that's not a person, but we still have words that fall in that area. And the A-R-D isn't a multi-syllable word. It's not accented. So Here's the accented syllable, so it's going to say the erd sound, okay? Now, this is interesting. This is Montegard. This is a place, but it's saying ard. So sometimes it will do that. We'll go over a few more words. And this, and oftentimes when it is a place or a name or something like that, it will say words that you, it would say sounds you wouldn't typically expect them to say. So now we have buzzard. See how it buzzes around, flies in the air. It says erd, and it is an animal. Hazard, tankard, mallard. So, but look at this one, reward. What happened here, boys? You have a W here that causes this to say or, but ward is its very own word all by itself and you put your prefix e re on it. So sometimes when you're doing that with a prefix like this, it is not, especially with ward, it's not going to switch this. It's not gonna say reword, okay? Like mustard or custard, see how those work. But these aren't people, so they must mean something else by where the origin is going to fit. But this says regard. See what it's saying? Ard. So sometimes when you have these prefixes like that, you're going to maybe, this is going to maybe change, right? Air word. See when we have small words like this, but look at this. It's not saying ward like that one is. It's saying word, air word, in word. So you have to be careful with that. You might want to say air ward, but it's not air like this one, reward. Okay. Okay, so ARDs can stand for art. 
it is a variant. So letters are removed and we can use A's, T's, or D's when this happens. And put those letters into words to make the same meaning, but they're changed. For instance, this is uh, braggart. And your base word is brag. Okay, so now let's talk about our vowel R syllables in some of these. And when do they, when are they vowel R's and when are they not a vowel R? So this says deer. Is this a vowel R syllable? What do you think, Paul? Oh, vowel team. It is a vowel team. So this looks like the AR. And oftentimes, if you have AR in the multi-syllable word, especially at the end, it will say er at the end of multi-syllable words. That's what it says when it's sitting in the unaccented accented syllable. But this E-A-R, it says different sounds when you hear it with an ear. Now remember, E a e a says different sounds. Do you guys remember the three different sounds that it says? E, uh, e a, er. and e. Uh. Okay. Um, and and so, but the r forces it to say different sounds. So, and it's important for you to hear those sounds. Deer. Ear. See how it's e a r saying ear in this word. So hard, see how it's not saying R there, but it's saying R here. So you can't just look at something and say, well, I think that's going to say R if you see an AR because it has the vowel team with it. So this one, AR says R, hard, but para, why is this one not saying R? Why are we not saying para? Exactly, Dan, because this right here is a vowel. So if you have an AR followed by a vowel, it's not going to be a vowel R anymore. It's going, this vowel will trump the vowel R syllable and it will force that long A sound. So you would want to break it right here, but some people might disagree with that. Uh, we do have disagreements in that and you'd want to break it right here, but then it would still say R if it was broke right here, but it's the same pair, which may, forces that to be open. This is the accent syllable, and this is schwa. Gear, is this a vowel R right here? No, it's a vowel team. And see how the E-A-R says ear, farm. This A-R is saying R because it's followed by a consonant, tear, this E-A-R is saying E. So this E-A is saying E-er, E-er. So you can hear that, tear. Now barn, A-R, is saying R because that is a consonant, right? E-year, E-A-R, says E-er, right? because this one, it just says, if you don't know what the EA is going to say, just play with it. Is it gonna say A, is it gonna say E, is it gonna say E, right, or ER? The, e, the EAs, EARs can also say ER. Cart, how come this is saying R, Paul? Because it's a vowel R. Because that's a consonant. And you're right, it is a vowel R, but it's followed by a consonant. So it has to be followed by a consonant for it to be a vowel R syllable. Er roll. See how this one's saying er. Er roll. And your ERs say er, right? Earn. See how this has changed. So they say different sounds. But here, this one says a, but air. So just know the different sounds of your EAs with their Rs. Near, saying E, near. So yard, this AR is saying R because that is a consonant. Star. So if you put an E right here, it would trump that vowel R and it would be a vowel team and it would say stare. 
but taking it off, it now is a Valar syllable and it says star. Now this one's a little bit trickier. What does this word say, Paul? Word. This says ward. ward. Yeah, so sometimes it's easier to read things when they're in a sentence because you just assume, but sometimes um, reading it by itself, you all of a sudden you're gonna say, well, is this ward or word or what is this? Now, W's, um, this, it, this word is ward. And when you have a W followed by an AR, it is going to say or in smaller words like this in the accented syllable and it's followed by a consonant. Does that make sense, boys? That's why that says ward. It's saying the O-R sound. Warm, it's saying the O-R sound. So A-Rs, when they're accented and it's followed by a consonant, it's going to say or. Now, why this says army. Why does that say army? Why does this say R? Because it's followed by a consonant. Excellent. It's followed by a consonant. Very good. Now let's go into the ER sound. Tau er. Now ERs are so much easier than the ORs and the ARs at the end of a word because if you have an ER, it almost always says er. Sometimes it can switch to schwa, but I would always put it as er when you're learning and when you're trying to figure things out. Tau er. Germ. Now we're, this G is turn, saying j because that is an e, i, or a y. Germ. See how it's saying er. Herb. That's h is silent. Borderline. How we have the er right there. Derm. We don't have a switching up of that. Timber. So it's going to say er where it's in the middle of a word, at the end of a word. How do we spell or at the end of words? O r e. So you can't spell it with just an O-R. It, it doesn't work. Because oftentimes O-R at the end of a word says er. Now shore is its very own word because this is a compound word, offshore. So, but now there are exceptions to the rule like for and or. But if you want or at the end of a word, it needs to be O-R-E because even then, oh, if you put an E on there, that's a different kind of or, and here it's a different kind of for, right? Detector, see how this O-R is at the end of a multi-syllable word. This is the accent, it's your Latin root, so it's gonna say er. See how E-R says er on its own. Amber, detector, offshore, so that's how you would do that there. Now, let's more. Germ, we talked about that here. This G is saying G because that is an E. Germ, this ER is saying ER. Some people could maybe even think that the EAR can say, is they get them confused with that because sometimes EARs do say the ER sound. And so that's why it's so important to study your spelling words, not just be able to read them. But this one says E, ear, and smeary, okay? But look at this one. What does this one say? Wearer. So this E-A-R is saying A. And then we have ear lap. But we have germ and verb. E-R says er. ER says er. Now we're going to talk about the W and how it changes the vowel sounds. So W's, if you have a W in front of your vowel R, and we talked a little bit about here, but we're really going to focus on these in here. If you have a consonant following it, it's in the accented syllable, it's going to say or. Okay? So what does that word say? Swarms, like a swarm of bees, right? Warm up. What's this going? To, what's this saying? This. It's getting prepared for something. Yeah, it's saying the O R sound because of that W right there. Uh, warrior. 
What's it sing? Warrior, O-R. Now, oftentimes when you have an A-R-R, -R, this makes it say air, but not when you have a W in front of it. It's still saying the OR sound. I thought this was so interesting, you guys. Really pay attention to this. This says sword. And oftentimes ORs, when, see how this gets switched, this AR switches to OR, but we have OR, what does it switch to? It switches to ER, the ER sound, right? But this is still saying OR, sword. Why? It's because this W is silent. It's not causing this to switch. So we say sword. This says sword. Is the W silent here? No, so it's going to say or. Right, Isn't that fun? That's like so interesting. Have you ever, when you're um, spelling your word and you're going, is that a sword? We don't say sword, we say sword. So this is, a, this is a fighting sword, and this sword is actually a farmland where it's cut grass. And then we have on word. Now look at that. We have, this is saying er right here, E-R. The A-R-D, what we were talking about earlier. Now if we have on word, in word, upward, air word, so how I really look at that to help you maybe with that is we went over our prepositional phrases and they're telling us where we're going to go. Onward, inward, upward. These are all prepositional phrases. These are all preps. And these are, if there are by itself attached to a noun. But in this, it's telling you where to go. And so it helps you think. It's, if you can remember the ones that's telling you where to go, it's going to say erd, not um, ord. Where's that? Like ward. Okay? This is telling you where to go, like prepositions tell you where to go, but they're not considered prepositions on this word. It's just a way to help you remember that. Air word, onward, inward, upward. Where are you going to go? That's where you're going to go. Okay, so now we have warble. That AR is saying or, okay? Which can be super confusing. So W's can and should make vowel sounds longer. No written sound can substitute for repeatedly listening to well-spoken, purely pronounced vowels. So if you can really hear and understand your vowels, then you're gonna be able to pronounce your words better. So let's go into some words where you're, um, with the W, we're really focusing on the W right here. Wander. Now, when you have a W followed by an A and it's closed and it's accented, it's going to say the AW sound, okay? Now this word says Warren but we have an A-R-R -R here and it's not switching to wherein, it's saying or. Warmth, or. See that W is causing this to say or and it's a one syllable word, water. Now, when you have an A, see it breaks right here, it's a closed A, it's the accented A so it's going to say Aw. Now, O's on the other, other hand, they don't say wander. This is wander. This is wonder. See the difference? Super confusing. Walrus. The AL's aren't as confusing because oftentimes we have our unit syllables that help us. The AL in the middle of the word oftentimes will say all, right? Okay, so walrus. So we have right here a unit sound. And so these ones are a little bit easier 
because you don't have to think. It is saying the ah sound, but oftentimes anyways, the A-L says ah. Warlord. What happened here? Why is this saying or? Well, because of that W right there. Waddle. This A is saying ah. It's because of this W and it's a closed syllable. It's accented. Warning. This is saying or because this is your accented syllable. Walkway. Now this is a little bit confusing. What is silent in this word? The L. So I wanted to actually bring this up in our last video. It says walk. That's what it looks like. But we can't spell C's at the end of our words, right? So you would think it was a walk, which actually there's a word like that. But this walk, this is why this is a true sight word. Walk, this is saying the ah sound. Whoops. And, but it's connected to this L also because it's a W, right guys? All right, so we have walking. So it's not always just walk. This L is silent, but it's saying the ah, a W that's, uh, so we have a W that's causing this vowel to change. Washing, that is a closed O. So that is the reason why this A is turning to ah. Yeah, honey, it's so funny. <laughs> How about this one, wondrous. How, what happened here with the O? Yep, this W is making this say the uh sound. Sh maybe like it's schwa sound, whoops, like a schwa sound. Now woodland, now the O's here aren't affected because this is a vowel team. Workshop, see how this O-R is saying the E-R sound. So some more words, we have a walkathon. So you're gonna have this aw uh sound, this L is silent. Water side, ah, see it breaks right here. So it doesn't matter, this, these are compound words right here. Compound words. So mo, th this is closed, it's the accented syllable, watermark, water side. Overwork, this is a prefix, and this is its base word. This is the accented syllable, it's saying the er sound. Now we have a double R here. We don't say, oh, I can't even say it. Warranty, warrantly, we say warranty, warrantly. Okay, and this is saying or. Like a warrant for your rest, warrantly. Work people, this is a British term and it's saying Er. So O-R's in the accented syllable, when it's followed by a consonant, will say er. Workbench, same thing here, it's saying er. Same thing, waterless. I put a whole bunch of, see you're gonna have these connected to other words, other parts of words, but it's still spelt the same. Work is still spelt the same, whether it's connected or not. You're still spelling it the same. Water with an O, walk over with an O sound, but you're spelling it with an A. Wartime, O, R, because this is a W, W, W's. Wallow, now this one's easier because you have your A-L in there. It's making that ah sound, wall. Worser, this is saying E-R because of this W. Were, sir. Walnut, it's saying the all sound, the unit sound right there. Waiter, now why didn't this change? How come it's, this A is not changing? Oh, because it's a vowel team. Excellent, Daniel, because this is a vowel team. So if your W is next to a vowel team, then it will not change, this vowel. The vowel will not change. Walker, remember, walk. And I put it in here because this needs to be memorized. Saying ah. Waitress, 
This is a vowel team, so it's not affecting us, affecting it. Wacky. Well, how come it's not saying walky? The words that I look, looked at, if this is followed by a CK, oftentimes the W will not affect it. Wax. Teamwork. E R. So see how this is a compound word, but we're still just spelling it the way you would spell it, and we're saying it the way you would spell it. Warm. So see how this is super confusing. So this says, so you might want to say warm, like um, car. Warm. You can't even hardly say that. It's so hard to say. And you want to call this um, warm. But this word is warm. And this word is worm. E-R and O-R. Does that make sense? So many people mix this up. Warmth. I think we already had that in there. Wacky. See how this is saying ah, and it's because the CK. That's the only thing I can see why it would be saying ah. Wasting. Now, this is not changing because this is a long vowel. This is a spelling word, true sight word. Why? There, this is just long. So you need to know, and it goes with a whole bunch of other words, based, paste, it's spelled that way. And this ends with an E, and then we drop the E and add on our vowel suffix. So if we look at the, the Q U's, now the Q says qua, and, but you cannot spell the qua, the Q sound without the U. It's, it, you just don't. I don't even think I've seen a word without the Q and the U. But you go by the sound that you would hear. What do we hear, guys? The, the KW sounds. So what's right here? What? So we are, that affects your words right here. The AR says or, quart. Now, quorum, how come this one didn't change? And we don't say quorum. It trumps it. It's not working. So this does say quorum. And, it, and this works with the QU. You, you see that more in the ARs, not the ORs. Quartz, OR. Quant, but you see them in the A's. Qual, see how the, the this is unusual. You, this is not typically how you would spell all. This is a very unusual word. Quack. See, this is not changing because of the CK. But here it is. It's saying aw, quad. This is not an English word. This says quiche. Can you tell where it's coming from? Huh? This is French. You know that because the CH is saying shh. The Q you hear is saying k, that part of the Q. It's not saying the W part of the Q. And so if that happens, it's probably a French word. Or it's not in our language. It's not in the English language. Now, that does not mean we don't use quiche in America or in Europe. But it's just saying it's coming from the French language. Because we, we make quiche in America all the time. It's a yummy, yum. Now we have a W can be a vowel. It is always the second part of the vowel team. Did you guys know that? Okay. So if the W follows a vowel, it is part of a vowel team. Are you understanding that? So examples. Saw. See how you have the W is following the vowel. Crowd. The W is following the vowel. Drew, the W is following the vowel. Lawn, the W is following the vowel. How, see how this W follows the vowel? So if it's following the vowel, you know that it is a vowel. It is part of a vowel team. So the W is a consonant when it comes before the vowel, like welder or welder. Now this welder, they're, they're the same things. You can just spell them either way. W's are also called semi-vowels. 
W's are connected to a vowel to spell a single sound. Okay, so those are the different sounds of, those are the different things that a W can do. Okay, so when a W acts as a vowel, it works as a vowel T. The A-W, E-W, O-W, and then here are some examples when it's working as a consonant. See how the W followed by the vowel, where? Does that make sense, Paul? Yeah. The, the W followed by the vowel, water. See how it's making the W sound, the W sound? The W followed by the vowel is, this is when it's a consonant, but this is when it is a vowel, is when it is, you have the W following the vowel. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so now let's talk about these confusables. Uh, wonder and wander. I'm saying a schwa sound with a closed O with, next to the W, even though it's the accented syllable, but this is a closed A and it's going to say the A ah sound because of this W right here. So wonder means admiration or marvel. And wander means to walk in a leisurely, casual, aimless way. Those are the two different, and this confuses so many people. So memorize that and get it down. But if you're understanding what the W does to the A and the O, then this won't be as hard for you when you're understanding that. Now we have where, where, and where. So these W's, see how these are following? The vowel is following the W. So you know, and this is a very old word, um, but I just put it in for your homophones. But it's following, see how these, this is a consonant because the, the vowel is following the W. So we have this where is clothing, protection for some other purpose to put on a person or a body. And this where is articles offered for sale like China ware. So the China we have is China ware, okay? Glass ware. And this ware, in or to what place or position? It's telling you where it's going to go. So these are very different parts of speech, boys. Each one, they're nouns, verbs, and adverbs. Which one's the noun? See why it's so important for you to understand what a noun is, what a verb is, what is, what is an adverb, because then you're understanding, well, where's that gonna go in a sentence, okay? So where's the noun in these three words? Okay, nice, because look, it's, a, it's China, it's something you can feel. So this is your noun, which one's your verb? The top of the yeah, yep, you're gonna wear it. What did you do, you wore it. So this is your verb, and then this is your adverb. Okay, this describes. Okay, so finding the W and pinpointing how it works is like finding something and locating it on the map. So if you look your W, find it. Is the W before the vowel or is it following the vowel? Is it before the vowel or is it following the vowel? So when you are looking at the W, on your page, how is it functioning? So if you're struggling, look at that. How is it functioning? So we have the A follows the W. So you know it's functioning as a consonant here. And, and it has the AL here, the unit sound, but it's also a closed A next to the W is in front of it. So it's going to say, ah, swallow. But look at this word. This part, this is a vowel team. You, this is your vowel, and this is your W, and so see how the W is following it. So if you can remember that, you're gonna say, okay, which one's the consonant, which one's the vowel? This is the consonant, and this is the vowel, okay? This is a consonant because your vowel is following it. Water less. So this is saying ah because this W is forcing that A to say ah. Now this is a consonant because look, the vowel is following it, but it's not gonna force anything to do anything 
because you don't change this vowel team sound. I mean, this vowel team can say a couple different sounds, but it's, but it doesn't change that it will say those sounds. The W is not going to force this to say the schwa sound like it does in the other ones. Now, warning. This is saying the OR because, look, your base word is right here, warn. And you have your suffix. So it's followed by a consonant. So it's not going to change anything there. So what does the A say? So ask yourself that. What is the A saying? So a W followed by an A says the short AW sound if it's in a closed syllable, like WASP. See how this is saying AW and it's closed. So W is followed by an AR says OR like WARP. See how this is saying OR and this is the accent syllable. It's a closed syllable. W is followed by the OR says ER like the word word. See how this is saying the ER sound. And Q is followed by a closed A says it's short AH sound like squat. Now let's review this a little bit. This, this can be tricky. So what does this word say? Ward. ward. A lot of people think it says word, but it doesn't say word. It says ward because this is a W and it's an AR and you have a consonant following it and it's the accented syllable. So it's going to say the OR sound because of that W. So it's going to say ward. But in here, I would say, maybe even say that this is the accent of syllable. Maybe that's why this is saying erd in word. But still, I love that you think about it as, ooh, a preposition. It's telling you where it's going to go. In word, up word. See, it's not saying the ord sound, on word. Now, this is, this is interesting. So the up is coming this way on this direction, warm. It's not affecting that sound right here. It's going to say the OR sound. Swarm, it's going to say the OR sound because of these W's right here. War, it's going to say the OR sound because of this W. Wash, it's going to say AH because of this W. It's closed, okay? That follows this, this rule right here, okay? Water, it's closed, it's going to say ah. And work, E-R, says the er sound. All right, this was such a fun lesson to put together, and boys, did you guys like it? Yeah, it was fun. So anyways, we'll see you in the next lesson.